Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're looking at the 1986 horror film Night of the Creeps. If you like alien slugs and zombies, well you've come to the right place. In deep space an alien is running, holding some kind of canister. Two other aliens chase after him, firing at him with laser weapons trying to stop him. He takes the canister and launches it out into the darkness of space. Meanwhile we're at Sorority Row in 1959. A young college kid named Johnny is picking up his best gal for a date as a report on the radio talks about an escapee at the Institute for the Criminally Insane. He tosses some rocks at her window to let her know he's arrived. The two kids are enjoying some Paul Anka when an officer named Ray pulls up to warn them about the nut bar on the loose. Ray and the young girl Pam definitely have some history. The two lovebirds sit and watch as a fireball comes flying overhead. The two kids drive over to where it landed as Johnny wants to know what the hell it was. Pam is alone in the car and another report about the crazy comes on, this time saying he's carrying an axe and on Route 66. Pam calls for Johnny and we see a man with an axe behind her. Johnny finds the alien canister and there's something inside. The canister breaks and something enters his mouth. Pam is alone and the man with the axe strikes. It's suddenly Pledge Week 1986. Two best buds Chris and JC are just a couple dorky college kids. All Chris wants is a girl and boy does he see one. A young lady by the name of Cynthia. She goes into the beta house and Chris just hates the betas, but it won't stop him from trying to meet her. JC goes in to talk to her to try and boost up Chris a bit, but she already has a boyfriend. Chris asks what she said and if she has a boyfriend and JC tells him he doesn't think she does. Chris thinks the best way into her heart is by joining the betas. The guys speak to Brad, a typical rich frat boy douche as they want to join. Brad says if they do a specific task, they'll let them in. The guys leave and another beta asks if they'll really be let in and Brad says no. And of course Brad is Cynthia's boyfriend. The guys enter the university medical center and have been tasked with grabbing a corpse and leaving it on the lawn of the rival frat. They enter a room and find the body of Johnny cryogenically frozen in a tube. JC hits a button that says disengage opening the tube. Chris is carrying the body when it grabs his arm. The boys run out screaming knocking a scientist to the ground. The scientist walks over to the body and is killed. The guys return to the dorm completely shook over what just happened. Meanwhile, Detective Ray Cameron has just awakened from a nightmare he was having. He's been tasked with investigating the lab break-in. Ray asks everyone where the second body is and tells them corpses that have been on ice for 27 years do not get up and walk by themselves. Meanwhile, said body is walking by itself. Cynthia arrives back at the sorority house and a girl asks if she can keep some brains in the house. For a project, of course. Cynthia says in the basement because she doesn't want them up here. She's getting changed and hears a noise at the window. Cynthia opens the curtains and it's the corpse of Johnny, which spills all these slugs from his head. Ray arrives on the scene and is a bit grossed out by what he sees. He goes behind the sorority house and starts having flashbacks to something that happened. The next day Brad confronts Chris and JC, believing they're the ones that brought the corpse to the sorority. JC tells them they didn't do it and chickened out and Brad kicks his crutches out from under him. Cynthia blows Brad off, however, and checks on our dorks. But they're both brought in for questioning about the murder in the lab. The boys plead their innocence as they ran out of there screaming like banshees. At the morgue, the body of the scientist reanimates and walks right past an officer who is completely oblivious. Meanwhile, the Bradster calls Cynthia and she really isn't interested at the moment. Ray gets a call and there's been another murder. Back with our guys and there's a knock at the door. It's Cynthia and Chris is a tad nervous. She tells them the body the other night came to her window and Chris comforts her, relishing in the moment. JC leaves to give them a bit of alone time. Cynthia tells Chris she thinks it was a zombie and these slug things came out of its head. He looks at her like she's nuts and say he'll take her home. JC is in the bathroom and he hears a really weird noise. He opens the stall finding a body with slugs coming from it. JC lights a pack of matches and burns one of the creatures. One however goes up his pant leg and he tries to crawl away, but another one is headed straight for him. Back with Chris as he's dropping Cynthia off. She asks him to the formal tomorrow night and he's a bit stunned. He goes to leave and is stopped by Ray who has been listening in on everything. The two talk, Ray asking if he had a high school sweetheart, then goes on to detail his. How he witnessed her getting hacked up with an axe and taking his revenge on the man with a 12 gauge shotgun, burying the body in a vacant lot behind the sorority which now sits the dead mother's house. Chris is clearly confused and terrified. The den mother is watching Plan 9 from outer space and banging is heard from under the floor. Just then a zombie comes out and driving an axe in her head. Ray gets the call and arrives at the scene. 
There's a call on the radio saying they got him, and Ray says to get the 12 gauge out of his car. The police corner the shambling corpse. Ray blows its head up and slugs come pouring out. The police are all stunned. It's formal night and all the girls and guys are getting ready. Chris hasn't seen JC all day and finds a tape recorder. It's JC telling him one got inside him. He can feel it in his brain. He tells Chris he loves him and good luck with Cynthia. All the betas are getting on a bus and Brad is out pouting because Cynthia blew him off. A slug crawls beneath him and he gets down for a better look. But the dead mother's dog shows up launching a slug in his mouth. Chris arrives at Ray's house and tells him they got JC and Ray grabs a gun. The betas are making their way to the formal when the bus driver swerves just missing the dog and crashes. Ray and Chris arrive at the police station and ask for a flamethrower from the police armory. The man asks for a requisition form but Ray has something even better. A 12 gauge. At the bus crash and the infected dog enters through one of the shattered windows. Back with the sorority and there's a knock at the door. Oh, but it's just zombie Brad. Cynthia comes outside to have a little chat with Brad, oblivious to the zombiness. Chris tells her to get away and they shoot and fry Bradster. He hands Cynthia a shotgun and the zombie betas arrive. Ray has good news and bad news for the girls. The good news is their dates are here. The bad news is they're dead. Cynthia's been given the flamethrower and is told to shoot when Chris does. Chris and Cynthia lock themselves in a small shed and a zombie pulls Cynthia out. Chris starts a lawnmower and runs it straight into the zombie's face. They see slugs go into the basement and Cynthia remembers the brains are down there. They head into the basement and find Ray with a can of gas and a huge swarm of slugs. The flamethrower is out of fuel and Ray starts counting down from 20, splashing gasoline around as he does. He winks at Chris and he heads back up with Cynthia. Ray turns on the gas counting down, 5, 4, 3. The slugs fly at Ray and he lights a lighter setting the whole thing off. Chris holds Cynthia as the sorority burns. The burnt body of Ray walks down the street smoking a cigarette. It falls, unleashing a bunch of slugs and they crawl their way into the nearby cemetery. But hey, it looks like the aliens came back to find them at least. I hope you enjoyed Night of the Creeps. If you did, maybe think about subscribing as I would really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and take care.